What's the best place to sell your art online is probably the most important question you can ask yourself because it has an impact on every aspect of your art career. From the art that you can make to the customers that you will attract and the price points that you can sell at. If you, for example, want to sell art at, let's say, a price point of $5,000 and you sell it on Etsy or eBay, then you will fail. No matter what, no matter how many awards you've won, how amazing your art is, how good your sales skills are, you will fail no matter what. And so this decision alone could be the difference between you being ashamed of yourself and telling your friends that you sold art when you didn't, or you actually selling art and making a living doing what you love. Now, as a full-time artist, I have a lot of experience selling art on various platforms in different countries, both offline as well as online. I accepted my work in Berlin, Milan, Buenos Aires, London, Brussels, you name it, and in galleries as well as museums, even some famous museums like the Coda Museum. And of course, I have experience selling my work online as well through my own website, through online galleries like Saatchi Art, as you can see in the screenshot, as well as just social media platforms in the DM section. If I would have known what I know now back then when I started, I would have saved myself tens of thousands of dollars and years of my life. And so in this video, the things that I will be explaining in this video usually takes artists a decade to learn and understand. Now, you're probably thinking by yourself. Cool, Hayes, but what is this gonna cost me? A video that could potentially save me tens of thousands of dollars and years of my life certainly cannot be cheap, right? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. It's not going to be cheap. It's going to cost you precisely one like on this video, which is kindly appreciated because it really helps with the algorithm, so thanks a lot. Now, the first thing that we have to talk about are mass online galleries representing thousands of artists. Are these online galleries the best place to sell your art online? Now, I would argue that these places are to some extent scams that you should be aware of and kind of stay away from. Let me explain that with an example, because there are some truly garbage online galleries out there. Now, I'm not going to name an actual online gallery and so let's just make one up. Let's call it like Art Finder or something. So here's what's going to happen. You will upload your art on Art Finder and they will then, if it is sold, take a commission from that piece. On top of that, Art, art Finder will also turn you into employees marketing their website for free without giving you anything in return. So let me explain what I mean with that. First of all, these platforms offer a platform that you can post your art on that is kind of nothing more than what a WordPress website would, would be doing for you. And so then in result, in, 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 as a result, you will have artists posting art on those websites and then posting that, sharing that on social media, telling people that they can buy their art on those websites and in doing so, driving traffic towards those websites. Now, if those websites, those online galleries would want influencers in the art niche, driving the same amount of traffic to those websites, that would cost those websites millions of euros converted to dollars. That would be millions of dollars. And so, that's, that's insane, really. I mean, these artists are not getting anything for that. When I was doing that, I wasn't getting anything for that. As a matter of fact, let's calculate how much they would actually need to pay those, those influencers, those imagined influencers here. Now, if we look at Artfinder, the website, then we see that about 20,000 works, more than 20,000 works actually, are being posted every single month. If we would say, Let's say 10% of those artists will share their art on one social media platform. Only one, not several, but only one. Then uh, let's say that those artists would have on average 4K Instagram followers. Now in that scenario, 10% of 20,000 is 2,000 artworks being posted on Instagram on 4K pages in a post and in a story, for example. Now that would be $200,000 every single month that they are getting for free. Now, remember, this is 20,000 plus, so in reality, it's probably going to be more. And we, we, we took low estimates here, low estimates. In reality, it's going to be more. And so that is, 
That is massive. That is over $2 million a year that they are getting in free marketing. Now, on top of that, they are not only getting free marketing, they are also charging those artists 40% commission on every sale that they make. And remember again, while doing nothing more than a free WordPress website would be doing for them. Now that is insane. Now, I'm not saying that this is a scam at all, except for the fact that I'm saying that this is a scam. By the way, here's a list of some other websites that you should definitely be careful with if you want to go on those platforms. What can we do about it? What, 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 what is there to do against these art scams? The only thing that I know really is, is awareness, is making artists aware of this. And so share this message with whoever you think could benefit from it. And so listening to that is kind of depressing. Another thing that is also depressing to hear is that my videos on YouTube usually only get 20 to 30 likes. And so you should like this video to support your fellow artists. That's really what, what you should be doing. Thanks for that, by the way. And I can promise you that the rest of the video is going to be positive. Let's shift this whole thing towards the positive. So let's go further. Now, when I said that these websites are not doing anything more than a free WordPress website would be doing for you, I was kind of exaggerating just a little bit. Depending on what artist you are and what type of art you make, these, these websites can have some benefits. A lot of them will, for example, do a lot of online marketing and drive traffic towards our websites. And so because of that, a lot of artists think that if they have great art and put it on those websites, they will get a lot of that traffic coming towards their art and, and get a lot of eyeballs and all of that stuff towards their art. Now, is that actually happening? The sad truth is that that's not the case. That is not happening at all. The only artists on those platforms that will get traffic, that will get organic traffic on those platforms is, is SEO artists who are having artworks that is SEO oriented or artists that are being featured on the homepage. In order to make sure of this, I actually tested this out. I tested it out. I, I posted art on those websites, art that won a lot of awards that exhibited internationally and got featured in some famous magazines like Vice, for example, as you can see. Now, by all standards, art world standards, this art is really good. There's no real discussion about that. And so, so this is good art posted on there. I let it sit there on those websites for several years without marketing those websites. Now, as a result of that, I got zero sales from that, nothing, not a single one, zero sales and barely any views. All the art that I eventually sold on those websites was me driving traffic, me driving collectors to those websites, selling art, uh, buying art there. And so, so that is something to take into account. The harsh reality is that artists will not see any of that traffic on those websites. The harsh reality is that qualitative art is not enough to get traffic on those places. And just like with brick and mortar galleries, there's some kind of misconception going on that these galleries have a lot of art collectors. They have an, a collector's base that is, that is spiraling up and ready to buy art from them. When in reality, it's oftentimes the opposite. Those online places have to fight hard to, to get collectors interested and to, to get buyers buying from them. This is not easy for them. They don't have an insane amount of collectors ready. Now, a lot of people, and this is to some extent a valid theory, a lot of people say, yes, but trees, those views and those people that come on those online galleries are completely different views. These are completely different people that are more inclined to buy art and so the conversion rates of those views will be way higher and and the people that you attract with that will be will be real art collectors real art collectors now this this sounds like a valid tactic and this is something that i believe myself as well and that's why i went on those galleries but it turns out if you test it out the conversion rates are the same the conversion rates are the same. I mean, the conversion rates are actually arguably less good than on social media. And the, 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 the people that you will attract will, will not be better. They will not be better than, than the people that you attract on, on social media. And so, so depending on how you play the social media game, I mean, there are a lot of ways that you can kind of ruin that game as well. And then some people also say that you should just put your art on as many platforms as possible. It's free to put it on there anyway. 
so why not? And that sounds to some extent also like a valid theory, I guess, except for the fact that you're losing an insane amount of opportunity costs, which is massive, it's super important. If, you, if we look at the stats of my experience, for example, we can clearly see that it would have been way better for me to post art on TikTok or Instagram than to post art on those online gallery platforms. All the time in writing descriptions out, doing SEO shizzles for those artworks, uh, uploading them, digitizing them, all of that work. I should have put that into, uh, into social media, really. That would have been way better. Now, let's get a little bit deeper into our analysis. The SEO strategy vs. the becoming a featured artist strategy. Those two business models on those online galleries. The SEO one is the most obvious one, so we're going to cover that a little bit later in this video. Let's start with the becoming a featured artist. Well, how does that look? What would you do? Is that a valid strategy? Now, first of all, becoming a featured artist on one platform is going to be way better than on the other. Let's, for example, take Saatchi Art. If you become a featured artist there, you don't only get traffic, you also get benefits outside the online game. Saatchi Art, for example, has the other art fair, one of the best emerging art fairs out there or art fairs for emerging artists out there. And so if you become a featured artist there, then you have those benefits on that fair as well and you will sell more there as well. And so that's a long-term benefit that you don't have on, for example, Art Finder. Even though becoming a featured artist on Artfinder is going to be the same amount of time as becoming a featured artist on Saatchi Art, for example. And so you have to, I mean, you have to make the right decision there. And then for people that don't have or cannot play an SEO game because their art doesn't allow that and they have to drive traffic themselves towards those platforms, is that even going to be a valid strategy? The whole becoming a featured artist. Because... You could be driving that traffic. I mean, it's going to be the same amount of time in that case to become a featured artist on a website as building your own website and selling it there. And then at least you have your own website. Plus, you will be building all of those skills that will be very, very important in the long term towards the future. And so is that a valid strategy then? Probably not. And on top of all of that, how does that even look becoming a featured artist? I mean, in the you driving traffic scenario, what are you going to do? You're going to drive traffic? not getting anything in return, making sales on those platforms, they will take commission from that. And then hopefully because your art has proof of work and you has, have proven yourself, they will somehow feature you. I mean, that is, that is just, that is just not a good deal. That's just not a good deal. If in any business scenario, you are the only one taking the risks and they are the only one benefiting, then it's not a good deal. Then there's no, person with a business mindset that would ever recommend you doing that. And so what's the alternative? What would be a better deal to make with those online galleries if you really want to work with that? Well, here's something that you could be doing. You could be building out a collector space with a proven sales track record, with an online presence and then go to those online galleries and say, hey, I can be making this many sales for you and I will be able to generate this much traffic for you. In return, I want to be featured as an artist and I want to, or I expect this many uh, sales coming from you. Is that possible? And a lot of times they will say yes. A lot of times they will say yes, there are online, there are people, there are artists making those types of deals. Now, before you will be able to make a deal like that and have that collective base and have that social uh, presence, online presence, then it will take you years. It will take you years before you get there. And so then you can ask yourself, yes, but in those years, wouldn't it be better to build your website and just drive it all through there? And the answer is probably yes. And so it all becomes very, very complex in that sense. And I understand that if, if you've been listening, it, it, it starts to become pretty complex. And we still have to go through 40% of the video. And so I would recommend the following thing, to watch it again if you need to. First of all, that would help me out a lot with the algorithm. And second of all, if this is too complex, just watch it again. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. This took me to really understand this. It took me five years or something. I wasn't doing this all the way in the beginning. And most artists still don't understand this. Most artists who are 30, 40, 50 are still selling on those websites. They don't understand. And so it's okay to watch it again. It's okay to just let it sink in. So let's talk a little bit about the SEO 
strategy on these websites as well because that's probably going to be the best strategy if you have art that is SEO oriented now first of all you will have to make art that is SEO oriented and you will have to make art in line with keywords that have a lot of search volume and a lot of keywords if you would go for particular keywords specifically and only those keywords and that's not going to be enough there's not going to be enough volume on those keywords if you for example do nude portraits only then that's not going to be enough sure there are people searching for nude portraits at all times but it's just not enough the, the, the volume on that is not is not large enough on those websites and so so you have to become a master of many trades and this is a little bit strange because 50 years ago galleries and museums liked artists that specialized in one particular thing and made that particular type of painting over and over and over again or or sculpture or whatever but in this seo strategy you have to step away from that and and leave that business model behind completely and become as eclectic as possible so you can cover as many keywords as possible so you can generate as much traffic down your art as possible and sell through that and so this is a completely different model than we saw in the past a completely different model now you have to be aware of two things the customers that you attract with this tactic as well as the destiny that you're kind of going into with this tactic. Now, first of all, customers. Which customers do you attract? Because whoever understands the customer best wins in business. That's always the rule. And so what are these customers? These are normal people that are searching for art because they want to give art to someone. It's a gift. Or because they have a modern interior and then suddenly they want to have some, some modern thing there. Now, these, these types of people, they don't value tr the traditional credential system that we have in place. They will not value awards. They will not value solo exhibitions or catalogs. Or they will not recognize the added value of those things. And so as a result of that, you will not put time in acquiring those credentials. And because you're not acquiring those credentials the museums will not be interested in you and so you will not be featuring art in museums on top of that because those people don't have huge budgets you will have to play the pricing game you will have to sell fairly cheap and because you're selling fairly cheap your profit margins are fairly low and because your profit margins are fairly low the potential commission that galleries could take on your art is just not interesting and so they will not work with you can you make a decent living off of this SEO strategy? Yes, I know artists who are making six-figure revenue streams with SEO strategies, but those artists will probably not be featured in galleries or museums for the reasons I just mentioned. And so you have to be aware that that is the, the destiny for your career that you choose when going for SEO strategies. So let's talk about the alternative options that you have when you don't want to sell in mass online galleries. You have, first of all, brick and mortar galleries who have an online aspect going on. Second of all, your website, your online website, and third of all, social media. Now, let's talk about your website first. If you are going to drive traffic towards your website, you don't have to pay commissions. And on top of that, and this is crucial, we're gonna talk about this, you own all the data of the customers that you're driving to your website. Now, if you compare that with these online mass galleries, 35 to 40% commission, which is probably going to become 50% commission in the future because everything is moving online. I know brick and mortar galleries who are getting 40% of their revenue streams now online. And this is only going to increase. And so the competition online is only going to increase. And so this 40% commission things that they take now, that's going to be 50. It's going to be 50. Now, let's think about what I just said here. When you have a website and are driving traffic towards your website, you own the data of those people that are coming on your website. This is hugely important. This is insanely important. And ironically, something that you don't know if you don't build websites and sell with websites. And it's something that you should know before. And so this is ironic. The thing that you should know before having websites the thing, the reason to go on website is oftentimes the thing that you only learn while having website and while selling on that website. And so here's what happens. If you have 
Google Analytics stuff and Facebook uh, Pixel and all of that stuff on installed on your website, then you will collect data from all the people that are doing stuff on your website. You will collect all that data and then you will be able to do stuff with that data. For example, you could target a campaign, a marketing campaign to all the people who went on your website in the last three months. You could target all the people who came from YouTube only. You could target all the people who went and wanted to buy something, put something in the cart, but didn't. You could, etc. cetera, et cetera. You, you can t target anything that you want. And anyone who is familiar with e-commerce, with selling online, knows that all the money is in retargeting campaigns. All the money is in retargeting campaigns. And so the important thing here to notice is that those online galleries can do the same thing. If you are driving traffic to their website, and then that traffic that you brought there buys an artwork of you, then those online galleries can then use that information, that data, to target that same customer again in the future. They could, for example, take an artwork that is very similar to your art, that, that fits perfectly with the piece that they already bought, that customer that you brought there, and then advertise the art of a different artist and then adver advertise that on Facebook or Instagram or wherever the collector is, is, is spending a lot of time and in that way effectively stealing the art collector that you brought to them. And so this is something that they do literally every single minute of the day. And so this is something that you have to be aware of and that most artists are not aware of, that I wasn't aware of. If I would have known this, I would have, I would have never drove traffic towards those places, art collectors that, that are willing to buy art to those places. I would have never done that. I would, of course, never <laughs> have done that. And so this is, this is really something that you have to be aware of. Now, in a small gallery setting, that wouldn't be a problem. Then you can just drive traffic to that gallery. They represent, let's say, 10 or 15 artists and perhaps one of your collectors now buys a work of somebody else. That's good karma. That's good. You're helping that gallery out and, and somehow that will come back to you. Somehow that will come back to you. But, but if you're doing that for a gallery that has 40,000 artists that they're representing and they don't really care about, about like one artist of those 40,000, then, then, then that karma is not going to come back. Then that's just not going to come back. And then, then it's, it's all going to be forgotten really. So far the best place to sell art online seems to be your artist website instead of selling art through online galleries. Now, before we make that final conclusion, there's one more thing that we have to talk about, and that is social media. Because social media is actually an extremely powerful way to sell art, and it's becoming more and more powerful as we go on. Not only in the amount of art that is being sold on those platforms, but also the price points for which art is being sold. Just five years ago on Instagram, people were saying that you could sell art on Instagram, but only art under $5,000. Now, five years later, we are saying you can't sell art on Instagram, but only art under $25,000. And five years from now, we might say, yes, you can, but only under $100,000. The thing that I want to say, the point that I want to make is that, that times are changing and that things change and that we artists, as well as galleries, as well as a lot of professionals in the art world are not evolving rapidly enough with those changes and that leaves a lot of upside on the table. And so we should be talking about that because it's really important. We should be talking about how to find art collectors on Instagram. How to actually practically sell art on Instagram without having a lot of followers, for example. And, and how to build that community out. But here's the thing. That would be another 15 minutes and frankly, a completely different video. And so I'm very sorry, but we're not going to do that predominantly because I already did. It's a video called how to sell art on Instagram without having a lot of followers that you could be watching right now. My name is Dries Ketels. Ring that bell, subscribe. And because you made it to the end of this video, all the way to the end, make sure to comment your website and some information of, of, of the art that you make and, and post on that website underneath in the comment section so that people who are thinking about making their own website after watching this video can check out websites and, and kind of compare and kind of get inspired by it. And hopefully you will get some traffic from that as well. If you want to do that, just reply to the comment that is pinned so that it all stays on top. And uh, yeah, again, my name is Dries. Hope to see you again. Ciao, ciao.